Good morning. So it's time for a still 661 build update. So if you've been following uh, this build, I've already made one video about it. And I made a couple posts just showing kind of some of the steps here to get this to work. So this is a 661 with a 2100 piston uh, out of a Husqvarna 2100. This piston's got a very similar pin to crown height. That's why I selected this piston to do this swap. It also has, it's a full circle piston and it's got a wider skirt. So I think that you know, wear properties wise, if this piston holds up, which it's held up, I have a, a piston from the Duke in my 880, that's a 3120 piston in there. And that one seems to be holding up pretty good to the much higher RPMs than what was uh, it was designed for. So I feel that it's safe to try another one of these and a OEM saw and see how how much power I can make with this one. So it took 430 thousandths off the skirt. I did a 40 thousandths tapered pop-up at a five degree angle here. You can kind of see that I polished it so that no less carbon will stick to it as well, but you can still kind of roughly see that pop-up outline there. So 40 thousandths from the edge, five degree angle. Uh, I was doing that initially to try to reduce some weight, but the real reason that you want to do that is because these primary transfers, you can see there's some JB weld in there where I ground through when I was beveling the back wall of these primary transfers. I have them opening a couple of degrees before the secondaries because they are compromised. And if you flow water through, uh, you know, your port here, your feeds, then you see that the primaries don't even flow anything. So I opened those first to try to utilize them. Both of them have, have a good wrap pattern as far as how the water flows up the cylinder wall. So I left them basically alone. I slightly have them angled up. So I was hoping not to have to grind or hoping not to grind through like I did here, but I did and had to put some JB weld in there to fix it. So hopefully this will last long enough for me to at least, you know, prove that this is a, a viable swap and it was worth all the work that was required to do this. Um, the main reason besides, you know, just the, the design of this piston is, the main reason for one to do this was I was able to hit that 65% of the bore as far as the exhaust port width. So that's my main reason. Then the, the wear properties of a full circle piston versus a, you know, a piston more like this. This saw has got a lot of time on it. Uh, you can see this is the piston that I pulled out of it. It still was probably okay. Here's the intake side. You can see that that's worn where that piston rocks in there when it's running. Uh, so, and the cylinder is, is not 100%. The cylinder does show signs of wear, but I, it still runs pretty good, in my opinion. It's not like it was on its way out. I just knew that it was time to at least try to do a piston in there to try to get another piston life out of the cylinder. So the other things that I had to do to this piston while we're still right here is I ground all these little casting pieces out so that, one, I could run the stuffer. There's these four little casting pieces all the way around here and then the other thing I had to do was in order to clear this crankshaft right here I ground some material off here and then I just beveled it and made it smooth on both sides and matched it just to just to try to reduce a little bit more weight uh, the wrist pin that I'm going to use is a 880 tapered pin that pin weighs 20 grams the stock pin is 6.6 uh, .6 grams lighter so this whole setup is slightly heavier uh, about six six point six grams heavier, but I don't feel that that is you know too much of a concern. I've went twenty grams heavier when I did the O sixty four piston in that four forty hybrid, and that's one seemed to run fine. I've torn that down because I would need new new seals in it in order to for me to want to keep running it. So, but the crankshaft was fine, and I've ran that saw quite a bit. So I feel that six. 0.6 grams is essentially almost nothing, uh, especially in like an OEM setup here. So that's uh, why I'm not concerned about that at all. The other thing that's nice about this piston is it is, I feel that this is a better suited piston for this style of build anyways, just by the way that the transfers are designed. It kind of more resembles now like a 500i as far as the piston design. So I'm hoping that this will make a considerable more amount of power than what just doing a, just a basic port job. Uh, with this piston because you know you are limited with the exhaust port width and what I've seen in the previous builds that I've done the ones that I've been able to hit 65% of the bore you know relative to what you can do um, with the piston that you you have selected or what came with it 
that seems to make the most power. So that's a little bit about that. I'll show you the port work that's almost done. So here's the exhaust port here. It's a little bit dirty. I need to clean it up. Um, uh, focus. So there's the exhaust port width. It's 65% of the bore and then it's beveled, but it's, so it's maybe, maybe closer to 70. Here's the intake port. I need to fill the intake with some JB Weld. Uh, it's currently sitting at 90 degrees since I took more material off of the, the skirt of this piston in order to run the stuffer. I felt that it was needed or it was, it was okay to do that uh, because I can just fill the bottom of the intake port with epoxy and just save myself a little bit of trying to grind in this case, which is not, not an easy thing to do. You get metal shavings down in the case and you're trying to wash them out. And do you get all of them out? I don't really know, uh, but I was just trying to avoid doing that on this one since uh, you know the design allowed for me to do it a different way. So that's what I'm gonna do. So the other thing with that is this lower pin, you know, the, the locating pins are completely different position than what's on the 661 piston. You see that this is the intake side, there's the upper pin. So I feel that the way, the reason that they did this is because the upper, the lower pin is pretty close to the top of that intake port. So you don't want that to cross. So I'm not gonna raise the intake port at all, but I am gonna make it wider to make it the same area that it was from the factory. I don't believe in making the intake port super large. I've tried that on a couple of builds and I didn't really notice any benefit from doing that. So I'm gonna keep them, keep them stock. The 880 and the Farmer Tech 440 both run pretty good in my opinion. And I didn't enlarge the intake at all. I just changed the duration of the intake and they, they seem to run good. So I'm gonna keep that same theme. That seems to be what's working for me. So that's how I'm gonna do this one as well. So if you're doing this, or if you're just porting a 661, be very careful of raising those primary transfers. You can see from the outside here that there's really not a lot of material on that primary transfer side. The secondary, you're completely fine, but that primary side is, is you're very limited. As far as raising them, you gotta be real careful. Otherwise you end up trying to do something like this, like what I'm doing. So hopefully uh, this will at least last long enough for me to you know, see that this all runs good and I don't know, I'll probably just keep running it till it stops running good. And then maybe just get a new cylinder and then try this whole thing again, just a little bit different. This time around, probably take less off the base, uh, something like that, and try to try not to grind through on the second one. But, so yeah. So gonna run a base gasket. I like the style of these base gaskets that's in here. Rubber eyes, I ordered a new one, but I used this OEM one or one that came with it just to set up all the, the port times and stuff. So that's how I've done that. We'll do a timing advance on here as well. I do want to get a, a there's a 661 suspension kit. So I'm going to get that little rubber grommet, throw that in here while it's all apart. It's the easiest to do when it's all apart anyway. So I'm going to do that as well, just to stiffen it up just a little bit. It doesn't necessarily need it, but I do like having a, a robust chassis so to speak, on the saws that I run because it really allows you to feel, you know, if my hand here is the tip of the bar, it allows me to feel where the tip of that bar is, you know, when you're doing like an undercut. So you can fully cut underneath, but you're not going too far where you might hit the dirt. So that's why I really like a, a stiffer chassis so I can feel what's going on with the tip of that bar when I'm cutting. That's just, uh, just the way that I'm doing it. Kind of, that kind of comes with experience. So stiffer chassis is my preference. Um, so that's pretty much it. I, I, I think I showed uh, the port work here. I'll show it again. So there's the squish band right there. It's a six and a half to seven degree angle. Using my little angle finder, there's the transfers. Intake completely stock, like I said. And while we're on video, I'll show you a couple of quick things. So here's the muffler. Here's my original muffler mod that I did when I bought this saw before the bark box was out. I really like the bark boxes. On my 880, I actually removed this this screen here because this the screen actually is it actually adds quite a bit of restriction. You think about what the size of that area is. If you added up all those little squares, it's uh, significantly less than what this whole port width is. And with my 880, since I'm only really cutting the logs in half, I felt that it was okay to just cut that screen completely out because I want that exhaust to go away from what I'm cutting. If I had a 
exhaust deflector like this shooting straight out, then it would be shooting right back towards my hand, which is, this was my original saw for cutting the logs in half. And I just seen that that was not ideal. So that's kind of why I built this 880 the way I did. So yes, yeah, so that was the original exhaust port. It's pretty beefy. You can see that there, just did some stainless hardware and I just pinged all the nuts so that they, or all the bolts so that they would not come off. And that has worked really good. Um, I definitely think that these West Coast ports are nicer. They look nicer, they're easier to install, but you know, those also work. I'm gonna add an additional one here on the side. That's why it's out here. So I'm gonna add one port right here just to make sure we got enough flow as far as the exhaust. I'll keep the screen in this one, so that's okay. Uh, but this one, I definitely wanted to remove it since I didn't want to put any other ports. I'll show you quickly this mandrel that I used to cut the chamber. So 56 millimeter mandrel here. Uh, these front two set screws hold the cutter in place. They kind of lock it in. And then this third one here, these are all quarter 20, by the way. This third one here actually controls the height. And that's my little angle finder. That angle finder is actually for... Uh, doing alignment on cars. So um, it's just, I'm just using it as an angle finder, but I'd assume that it's a pretty accurate angle finder since you're doing alignments and stuff with it. So here's my cutter, relief this other side here. You don't need, you only want it to cut on one side in my opinion. And you know, you can see the cutter edge is slightly past the edge of the mandrel. So you get that full cylinder, uh, you know, full chamber width cut. So you don't have any clearance issues. So that's my mandrel here. I figured I would just show that. Another thing, so I was going to do this uh, 660 big bore cylinder on my 064. The reason that I was going to do a, a big bore was because of piston selection. The piston selection that I have for this one, because I want to hit that 65% of the bore, I was going to use a 395 meteor piston in this build. And, you know, just cut all the material out of the chamber run a decomp i've already bought another cover but unfortunately with the way that these cylinders are casted they don't cut very nice in the chamber it just kind of you can see it's like it cuts all all gummy and i used the same mandrel i didn't have this angle on it i was running it flat but it just does not cut nice so that's kind of one of your your drawbacks with running a uh you know, non-OEM cylinder. The OEM cylinders, especially with the hand mandrel set up here, they just cut so nice. You can get them nice and smooth, especially if you got a mandrel that's really close to the size of the bore that uh, that you're doing. If you have it slightly undersized, it will still work, but you're not going to get as true of a cut. So that's just, you know, these are all just little things to keep in mind. I feel that this this style of cutter works the best, only having it on one side and this little design that I came up with here seems to work pretty good. I think that two, two set screws is, you know, mandatory on this. I, I mean, I guess if you have a, a full machine shop and you can get everything perfect and true and you don't have to run two, but I like having two because if these two holes are not perfect, if they're slightly at an angle, then it's going to want to push that cutter right or left and you're not going to be able to get it aligned good if you only had one set screw. So having two allows you to kind of go back and forth and lock it in the exact position that you want. And then this third one, like I said, just controls the height. So yeah, so that's the mandrel setup. I'm hoping that I'm gonna figure something out to cut this chamber, cause I would like to run that 064 with a 395 piston in there. I feel that that should run pretty good. And given that I can hit that exhaust port width and I can keep that intake duration under control by just grinding a little bit of material out of the crankcase so that that skirt can sit down in there and then I'll, you know, mill the skirts down to get that intake duration that I'm after. So that's what I feel will work the best on that one. Um, but currently we're working on this one, the 064. I really need to just figure out how to cut that chamber smoothly. And then I'll be able to work on that. I also made a mandrel for uh, a 52 millimeter mandrel for a 440, 460. So you can see this is just how I do it. A nice upright slot for my cutter three pre you know clearance uh, holes here i just did these in the mill and just had it sitting in there as flat as i could relative to this slot and then i just move the 
mill and just mill three little pockets here so it's easy for me to drill my three holes when you do this i feel that don't try to do it on a drill press the best way to do it is to just drill with a hand drill and just eyeball it because i feel that i can be more accurate more straight with a hand drill than i could uh trying to do it in a drill press where you're somewhat blind as far as uh how you're you got to set up i guess if you had a vice and stuff i kind of like a uh, a milling style vice and you might be able to do it but i'm just going to do them by hand i've done had good success doing it that way you don't need a 10 or uh a quarter 20 set screw you can you can definitely get away with a 10 24 you just got to be careful because this material is soft this it says it's 6061 extrusion stock it's just the cheapest stuff i could find on ebay i think it came out of radford virginia um, but this is what i've always used and there's you know plenty of it on ebay so that's what i've been using so yeah so that's a little update on the 661 and kind of a couple other things that i've been working on hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching